Good morning, Janet. Uh, if you guys want to speak up, you guys can just unmute yourself and just say anything. If you feel more comfortable typing your questions in the chat box, that's perfectly fine as well. So let's get started, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Today is August 16, 2023, and this meeting is for our realtors. And we're going to go over the interest rates, the inflation rate. Uh, we're going to go through some what's on the headlines, and our main topic is auctions. You guys should know how auctions work, and we're going to teach you how to find properties for the auctions, how you want to work with the investors, and how you want to make sure that you can get paid before you go to the auctions. Okay? So let's get started. So the interest rates are definitely on the high end. So according to Freddie Mac, for last week, they're at 6.96, which is almost 7%. Forget that almost, we are already over 7%. We're seeing 7.26 as your national averages for a single family client with a good credit score of 6740, putting down 20% for conforming loans. If they do, you know, they want to put down less down payment is a secondary property, you know, second home and investment property. So they're going to pay more than this. And your national averages for FHA is around 6.96 definitely on the high end compared to what we have been seeing and this is exactly what the government wants right now they want to increase it because they have they want to control this guy here which is your inflation right so last couple of weeks ago when we spoke about inflation we really said hey you know it's definitely heading um you know towards downwards around 2.97 which was at three percent but now it started trending back up so this is exactly what the government wants to control. Every time the inflation shows any signals that is going higher, they're going to put more restrictions on the interest rates. So not just for the mortgages. So let's say you want to go buy a car right now. It's very expensive to do that just because of the interest rates are very high. So the mortgages are also affected by that, right? So when the government sees or the F, uh, yeah, federal government sees this trending upward, that's another sign for them to even put more restrictions on it. So when your client asking you, hey, you know, will the interest rates drop anytime soon? The realistic answer is not this year. We are not expecting interest rates to drop anytime, uh, you know, this year. Hopefully by mid next year, we should see that. If they want to wait until then, that is up to them. There's pros and cons to that. Okay. But just the fact that will the interest rate come down this year? The answer should be no. Okay. So what does that do to your affordability? So let's say you have a household income of $100,000 and maybe a couple have saved up their you know, down payment around $80,000 and they know they're going to purchase a house so they don't have any uh, car payments and they have very minimum down uh, monthly debt. So around 100 bucks, right? But the interest rate is, let's say we're giving them 7.25 and they're purchasing a property with $5,000 tax and property insurance is fifteen hundred. They can purchase around five eighty five, and their monthly payment is going to be around four thousand dollars. And we're having this discussion with other agents. It just seems much higher compared to what they have been seeing before, around three thousand dollars. So that nine hundred dollar payment increase is a big jump for them, right? Especially when they're purchasing a house like. 585 right now you guys know the conditions for these especially if they're looking in nassau county when they purchase something like this they need to put some money for the renovations that can be forty thousand. it could be fifty thousand. really depending on what type of work they want to do so end of the day the property value has to be there because they're paying a lot of monthly payment and the prices are not coming down anytime soon okay so that is the dilemma that the buyers are having so here are some news um, headlines from last week here. So building confidence slips. We were talking about this in earlier meetings that the uh, builders that are building brand new properties, brand new houses, they were really confident because they, the inventory is not there. So they are easily able to go under contract. Even they're a little you know, scared now just because they feel like, hey, you know, the interest rates are too high. So if someone is trying to buy a million dollar property, they're you know, monthly payment is going to be pretty high. Okay. Oh, 
also affects your uh, rate lock volume. So as our loan officers, our loan officers have files that they are not locking right now simply because we are seeing the interest rates on the highest end. So what do we do? We want to monitor that every day, basically, and see when is the best time to lock your interest rate, right? If your loan officer can save you a few hundred dollars uh, per month, that's a big deal. In this market, that's the least that your loan officer can do. They can't control the interest rates overall, but they can pay attention to a daily basis. You know, if the interest rates are going down, hey, you know, maybe this Friday it goes down. I'm going to lock your interest rates now because you have seen that they were on the higher end on Monday, right? Rate average is close to 7% and market prepares to for fall slowdown. So we know that spring is your best time to purchase or sell. Now we are entering fall time. Why most people don't want to sell around fall time is because of their kids' school. Right. The kids just started the school, so they don't want to do any movement, uh, you know, move to a new neighborhood, um, you know, when they're just starting the school and everything. So that also affect your market. So as a realtors, we will see that slow down in the fall time. OK, so we are feeling the pain, uh, you know, Fed hikes affects housing market. We see that on a week over week basis. There are some real estate investors believe that the worst may be over. Uh, but it's a mixed outlook, right? The prices are not coming down, low inventory. The interest rates are really high because the Fed wants to control the inflation, okay? Next, this is very important to all of us, is that do you recognize housing discrimination when you see it? Safe and affordable housing should be accessible for everyone. So as realtor, our responsibility is to our clients, no matter who they are, okay? No matter who they are. You guys really got to put that in perspective that, hey, you know, I'm a realtor. I have a job. I don't care which nationality the person is from, how they look, where they're from. doesn't matter what the concept is. As long as they are qualified, you want to make a difference by providing superb customer service to all your clients. When you treat all your clients equal, then you know that you have nothing to worry about. Right. There are some undercover, uh, you know, uh, you know, government people that come to different agencies. We want to assume that everybody's like that. You want to assume that you're being recorded. You want to assume that, you know, every phone call that you're having, you're being recorded. Or when you're having an interaction with them, maybe it's uh, maybe that person is, um, uh, you know, uh, undercover or not. But when you have set your standards, that, hey, I'm going to treat everyone equal you will not make any mistake, right? So just provide superb customer service to all your clients. That's the best way of doing it. Do not steer, hey, you know, maybe this area is better for you because of this. No, let them choose. It might be because of their job. It might be because of their, um, you know, school, uh, you know, whatever the case might be. Maybe they want, they were, let's say they were in Queens and it was too noisy. They had a parking problems and they want to move to, you know, Valley Stream, uh, because of parking, you know, easy parking there, good schools there. That's perfectly fine as long as they want it. But right? we just can't steer anyone to a different neighborhood. But just treat everyone equal. I don't think you should have any issues with that. Okay. And pay attention to these younger households as well. There are some people out there that's below 35. Um, you know, they are still interested in home ownership. Some people are getting educated that, hey, the earlier you purchase a property, the better you're going to be off in the long run. Because we know that a property, when you're purchasing it, you're not doing it for a day or two, a month or two, a year or two. You're mainly doing it for a couple of years. At least average person lives in a property between eight to 10 years. Okay. So you want that, uh, you want to target those younger household members as well, okay? As long as they qualify, show them the properties. And in recent years, you can see that, you know, under uh, people household under 35 and even between 35 and 44, those numbers are increasing. Okay. Some people will ask you, hey, you know, uh, high interest rates, how do we go about that? You want to explain to them that we're not going to see two or three mortgage rates, uh, percent mortgage rates anytime soon, guys. We had a pandemic, right? The, you know, they didn't want uh, the government, didn't want our economy to go to depression. They started funding 
everybody hey you know uh, even the homeowners do have to make your payments uh they you know send checks to the house so they put in a lot of money in the market okay so you want to make sure that you tell your clients that two or three percent are not going to be your you know normal is not going to come down anytime soon unless we have a pandemic which we highly doubt who that will have interest rates are most likely to stay around six percent or more for a long time so for some people a home is not a commodity right some uh people have good reasons to for buying right they could be for their kids for new school right so they have different things maybe they're expecting a baby you know they're going to have a bigger family so those are the people that you want to target because those are the people that actually want to purchase a property okay and the prices as we mentioned many times you guys are already realtors they are forecasts uh and it's continuing to increase this, despite even the interest rates are you know even if they go at eight percent the prices will not drop you know like 20 percent or more they simply will not right just because of low inventory not pro enough properties are there so it really depends on your client how long they're going to wait you know and some clients you have been you know maybe you have them in your kv core and you're sending them alerts all the time and it's been you know over a year now those are the people who have the most regret hey i could have closed last year at five percent i thought five percent was high and now i'm dealing with seven percent right and some people are simply just holding down to their funds, even if they're renting and they're saying, hey, I'm going to hold down to my funds, increase my savings, and I'm going to wait a year. Right. We can't force anyone, but we can educate them. OK, so here are some stats. Again, guys, I'm going slide by slide. Any questions, concerns, just speak up. Uh, next is going to be your Queens and NASA stats here. So this is for July here. So for Queens, your supply was around negative one and a half percent. And same thing for Nassau. So we are not seeing the supply increase unless this number increases to four or five percent. Then we can see a little bit more inventory out there. OK, the demand with the high interest rate, the demand will decrease. How much is it decreasing? Not a lot. Around one percent in Queens and around three percent in your Nassau area. OK. These are the two things that's holding down to your prices. That's all in the high end. Okay. All right, guys. Next topic is going to be your MLS violations. We are seeing this with new agents that have a property. They want to put it on MLS. They get excited. Hey, let me put it on MLS real quickly. And then a day later, they get hit with a $50 fine, $100 fine, $200 fine, really depending on uh, your violation itself, right? So one, when you're, you, if it's your first time listing a property, have your team leader be with you, or you can set an appointment with me and I can help you out, okay? If you're part of a team, you should, your team leader should be helping you add a new listing to MLS. A couple of common mistakes that we see is that you're adding your personal information um, with in your property description. So you're saying, hey, is it three bedrooms, two bathroom, 40 by 100 lot size in Franklin Square, uh, you know, outside entrance to the basement. Text me on this number. That text me part will get you violated. Okay. Or you're putting up photos. MLS wants you to put your first photo that they want is, is front of the house. You should be able to see front of the house and see the layout right from outside. They don't want the bedroom or bathroom or living room, any of those photos to be the first photo. OK, so if you have that, they will send you a fine for 50 bucks for that, too. OK, also with the photos, some of you guys, by mistake, sometimes add a business card as a property photo. That's also a violation. OK, so you want to avoid these things. And these fines, if you don't take care of it, they just add up. So some of these uh, another fine is that let's say you have a listing now and you have that exclusive right to sell signed on the first, but you're putting it on the market three days later, five days later. That's also a violation. OK, so you want to make sure that as soon as you get the listing, you want to put in the market within 24 hours. Sometimes you guys need the photos to be taken. Hey, the photo might take a few days. At least put it in the market with at least one or two photos and then update the photos. Okay. 
or if you guys want to wait until the photos and say hey i don't want to do updating then just wait for the exclusive rights to be you know uh signed accordingly you just don't want any delays mls has a simple rule so you want to follow that and if you don't resolve these violations they tend to double every two days four days five days so you want to clear up the issue as soon as possible okay any issues that you have with the mls violations contact them tell them if it's your first violation hey you know can you guys waive this fee for me you know uh somebody will review it sometimes they will uh, waive it sometimes they won't waive it but whatever the case is you want to take care of that as soon as possible okay any questions guys it's really important that don't want anyone paying anything from their pocket when you don't have to No, no, this is for a property. Let's say you are working with the seller and the seller says, hey, you can put this property on the market, right? They're giving you exclusive right to sell and they're giving you, uh, you know, a three month listing, five months. doesn't matter how long the listing is. As long as you have the listing, you have to put it on MLS right away. That's the point. You don't want to delay that. Okay. Pocket listings, some of you guys ask me that too. Pocket listings is illegal, right? They don't, MLS don't want that. Where is that? Let's say you have a seller and the seller says, sell this property for me and you have an exclusive right to sell. And then you're telling, hey, I want to just keep this listing with my office or I'm going to just try to find, uh, you know, a buyer from my, you know, from my end so I can make double the commission, right? Both of those scenarios is wrong. You want the best for your client, the seller, to have the highest offer. How are they going to have the highest offer? By having more people look at their property. And how is that going to happen? Through MLS. People will see it. Other agents will see it. They'll bring their client. It will be listed on Zillow. People will contact you. So you want more eyeballs out there. And that's the best thing for your client too. Right? So end of the day, he will have multiple or she will have multiple offers. And they can make the right decision. So pocket listings, not legal. Okay. Next, guys, you want to put in the work. We know how the market is, right? We know the interest rates are high. A lot of people are scared because they just don't want to go on the contract right now or they just feel like it's not the right time to purchase. But we said that there are some uh, clients that are ready. So you want to focus on that. If you do the work, you'll have a great year in real estate, regardless of the market. Okay. If you don't do the work, and spend try you know spend your time trying to avoid contacting with other people you're not going to take you know this address you you simply not gonna do well right if you are scared to contact your uh you know people from your kv core to pick up the call and see hey how's it going you know i understand the interest rates are high but there's a new property do you want to at least take a look at it those are like little icebreakers even if you lost contact with one of your clients for three months how do you get them back with the listing. Hey, there's a new property in that area. I know we haven't spoken in a couple of months. I know the interest rates are high, but it's a new property. Do you want to take a look at it? And then hear them out. Okay. So guys, just do your work, put in the work. You know, you have KV Core, follow up with your clients. Okay. All right, guys. Next, let's go through auctions, right? This is one of the most frequently asked questions. Uh, we had three or four agents just in the last week, uh, or sorry, this week, just asking me for the process. So we said we're going to spend about 20, 30 minutes on this. So, you know, ask any questions regarding auctions. So first, let's ask this question. Why do properties go on auctions, right? The bank doesn't want to take this property to auction. They already have a mortgage, right? Number one reason is that the owner defaulted on their mortgage. What does that mean? That they stop making mortgage payments. Maybe they have a hardship. Maybe they don't. Right? So that really depends on the owner. But end of the day, the bank stopped getting paid on their mortgage. And it's a huge amount. You know, $400,000 mortgages, $500,000 mortgages, huge numbers. So the bank is not going to sit around for this person to start making payments when you know, they're going through some hardship or not, right? The bank just wants to move on with another owner. So they'll send this property to the auction and see who has the highest, who is the highest bidder. Okay. 
there are some more reasons for auctions. Maybe the person is going through a bankruptcy or maybe the person died and is a probate. Now is going to be going, you know, which uh, family member is going to own it, you know, whatever the probate process is going to be, whatever the highest auction is, once they have that, then they'll, uh, you know, the attorneys will handle the probate section. Maybe it's a debt settlement. Maybe they're going through a divorce and they want to send it to the highest bidder and then, you know, go that route. Or they can hire, a, a, you know, a realtor like yourself and sell it on the market and then split their, um, you know, profits. So how long does it take for the property to go through a foreclosure or an auction? Right? It really depends on the lender. Some lenders will take them to foreclosures within a year. And then we have seen that some lenders will take up to five years, right? Maybe they just, some lenders have too much on the plate. Maybe they're just giving them more time. Or maybe they're just letting the interest rate, uh, uh, all the interest, uh, you know, accumulate. So the, the, the payoff amount is even higher, right? Really depends if it's an arm loan, you know, they'll let that run for a little bit because <clears throat> those arm loans tend to be the most expensive for your owner. Right? So it really depends on the lender itself, how long will it take, right? Will the property deliver vacant, right? That's one of the most frequently asked questions as well. And the answer is no. You have to assume that the property is not going to deliver vacant unless it's clearly states it, right? If you see a property in the market and you see like 17 photos on it, and then you can see every, you know, and you see it's completely, you know, empty inside, Yes, then it will deliver vacant in most cases, and it will state that, right? But you have to assume that it will not deliver vacant. So if it's not delivered vacant, how long does it take for that tenant, right? The owner there becomes a tenant now because the owner is not no longer the owner there. So how long does it take them to get out, right? Typically, if you go through the eviction process, between six months to a year, really depending on which county they're in and what their rules and regulations are. Okay. So are auction properties short sale or foreclosure? The right term is foreclosure. The short, short sale comes before foreclosure because short sale, you're asking the bank, hey, I'm actually going through a hardship. I have stopped making the payment. And now I want to, instead of, you know, I owe you guys $500,000, uh, but I only want to give you guys, or I can get you guys $400,000. Could I get a $100,000 break? If they approve it, that's a short sale. Okay. But that time already passed. Now the lender simply wants to go on an auction. That auction goes through a foreclosure. Okay. And are auctions property also REO? Some of them, yes. Right? What does REO stands for? Is real estate owned property. These are bank owned properties, and bank simply wants to sell that to the highest bidder. They don't want to hire to, uh, a realtor and put it in the market. Some of them do, some of them don't. But if they're at the auction, they just want to sell it to the highest bidder on the spot. Okay. So how can we find auction properties? There's three ways that you guys should know inside out, right? Number one is going to be your MLS status. Number two is going to be auction.com. And number three is going to be in-person auctions, which we give you guys a list from Property Shark on like every other day in our WhatsApp group. So you have MLS Stratus. Let's talk about that first. How do we find properties on MLS Stratus? So once you're logged in into your MLS Stratus, click on Saved Searches. I have created this REO Queens and Nassau listings here and it's shared with you guys. So you guys should be able to see that. Instead of hitting Continue, once you select it, you want to hit click on Results. So once you see that, you will see a list of all the REO, all the bank-owned property that's listed on MLS, right? I always want to start off by sorting it out by the list date. If you don't see your column here, it might be, you know, to the right, to the left. You just want to find list date, and then you want to sort that out so you see the latest properties on the market on top. 
So once you see that, you want to click on the first property and see the details from them. Okay. And the details here, you will see that this is, it says REO. It says Y. That means yes. Even though this is a REO, this listing actually has a public open house, which means that most likely it is completely vacant. Right. You see how much commission you're going to get paid. And if you can't make it to, and if you cannot make it to these open houses, you can use the showing time icon, right? Or you can call this number for showing time and schedule an appointment. And it clearly says it's vacant, immediate occupancy. So this is a great opportunity for investors to be on, you know, hop onto this and get more details and actually see the property, see how much your work it needs. That's the most important question. Right. Some people will budget it, you know, on the lower end. Some people will do it on the higher end. You have to be reasonable, right? If you really want the deal to be made. So your job right here is to see if you guys can have access to it inside for these property. If yet, have your investor go in there as soon as possible with you. Or you will see something like this. Again, are you yes? But it says showing instructions, do not disturb occupants. Right. So what does that mean? You cannot schedule this. This is going to be drive by only, meaning you can just drive by the property from outside. You don't have any access to inside. You have no idea how much work it needs. So when you have no idea how, what type of work it needs, just by looking at the specs for the property, you want to assume on the higher end. You want to assume that, hey, the property is actually beat up from inside and needs a lot of work so you can negotiate it properly. Okay. You don't want to, you know, think that, hey, it's going to cost me only $50,000 to renovate this place where, in fact, that might cost you $100,000. Okay. So you want to pay attention to these. So these banks, they simply don't trust the listing agents that much just because we have seen it with our own eyes too when we see a listing on MLS or on Zillow. Uh, you know, a client says, hey, I want to try to, you know, see this property listed on short sale or foreclosures for $250,000, even though we know that the property value is seven fifty. dollars You know, how come it's listed at two fifty dollars and nobody's answering those calls, even though you're submitting your offer? That offer simply goes to, you know, that listing agent and he or she is not giving to the bank. So the bank have a better system for this. They have online portals for these properties. So when you're reading your agent only remarks, you can see that there that, hey, you have to click on or copy this URL, paste it, and then you're going to follow the instructions there. You're going to put your license number, your information, your buyer's information, what kind of offer it is. You're going to attach your you know proof of funds. All that good stuff is going to be on the online portal. Bank sees this right away. The realtor, the listing agent sees this right away. OK, so if the bank wants to counter, they'll do it accordingly. OK, a couple of different ones that we have. One is called Broker Mint. One is uh, prop, offer, uh, right, prop Offers here, Property Offers. There's a few other ones. As long as you're reading your agent-only remarks, the link should be there, right? They also, when you're using these platforms, there's usually between $100 to $200 fee that the buyer or the uh, 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 buyer's agent has to pay at the closing. Most of the time, the buyer has to pay this. So when you're submitting your offer, there's no charge. So all our agents should have an account on all these websites. You know, you don't want to just create these uh, accounts right off the bat. Just go one by one, especially start off with prop offers. And then Broker Mint is another one. There's a couple of other ones. When you see these properties, just create these accounts. And you can reuse these accounts later on for other properties as well. Okay. So that is your MLS, um, you know, process. You see a property, you see if it's available uh, to see inside or not. If it's drive-by only, your client is the one who's deciding. Whenever they're ready, even if they're seeing it or not seeing it, they say, hey, put in an offer for me for $450,000. dollars you are going to ask them, hey, obviously this is a cash deal. You're going to give me your proof of funds. They give you your proof of funds for $450,000 as a statement, right? That piece, along with along with the amount that they want to put in, 
you're going to simply go on an uh, online portal and put in your offer. Like I said, within 48 hours, because of these on online portals are pretty solid, the bank will reply within 48 hours accepting or rejecting your offer. So you don't have to keep chasing the listing agent over and over again. Okay. Any questions on MLS part, guys? All right, guys. Next, we're going to talk about online bidding. This is on auction.com. So you guys can be sitting at home or in the office here, have your client come with you in the office and say, hey, we have an online bidding and we, you know, this property that's listed on auction.com is very similar to, you know, being in person. But in person, the bidding ends within minutes. This one, online auction can take days. So they'll set a date, three days, five days, uh, auction time. And, you know, we go from there. So the first thing you want to do is go to auction.com and you can see screenshot of the homepage here. You can search by state, county, city, zip code, or the address itself. And you want to click on login or sign up. If you don't have an account, you want to hit sign up. And the sign up form is very simple. It's just asking for your name, your email address, password, and where you're going to be, you know, with zip codes that you want to be covering. Okay. So once you have that and you, let's say you search for Elmont, just to give you an example, you know, search for it, you see list of properties and you click on the first one. So let's look at this one, it gives you the address here. You can see how many times this property has been viewed, the specs for the property. This is a four bedrooms, three bathroom, around 1100 square feet built. Auction.com is saying that the estimated resale value is $700,000 but you want to do your own research. It tells you what their rental estimate is. On the bottom, it will give you even more details. And you want to click on register for auction. So the best way of doing this, let's say, you know, the auction is for five days, you know. Um, you want to start, if you're brand new to this, you want to probably do your first auction in the beginning days. So you, at least you get the hang of it, right? So let's say the auction just started and it's going to end in three days you're bidding on day one. So you're most likely going to get, you know, overbid down the line. So if you just want to get that experience, do that in that stage. You don't want to test out anything when the bid is about to end. So like this one here, the bid is, it just happens to be that it's going to end in 12 hours. If you're brand new, I would not touch this. Okay. But those experienced agents, you definitely want to, you know, you know that the prices or the auction prices actually go up on the last hours sometimes last minutes, okay? Even when you're, let's say you're bidding, the next person usually have 10 or 15 minutes to even increase it, right? So sometimes it doesn't mean that in 12 hours that will completely end, but if whoever is the highest bidder, every 15 minutes and they keep increasing, they'll wait until somebody gives up, okay? They will ask you to verify yourself. So you will have to, uh, you know, provide your license, uh, your driver license or, you know, any of these passport or anything like that. Um, so this way they can verify your account. This is just a one time thing. You you definitely want to do that. OK, on the same detail page that we spoke about on this page here. Bottom of that, you will see the, these sections. You can see the property uh, information. They'll give you a PDF files, anything that you can click on, you should click on it. And it usually has, you know, multiple pages giving you all the breakdown that they even have some comps done for you. But you're a realtor, you should be doing all that on your own and verify if it matches what they're offering. Okay. So anything else that's available, you just want to click on it and read that off, right? So the strategy of... Uh, doing bidding online, right? First is that you want to set your budget, right? You say, hey, you know, the property is listed for $250,000 and the bidding is going to be for next three days. You know, my goal is that, hey, I'm not going to go over $400,000 for this property, right? It's listed for two fifty. dollars Max I want to go is $400,000. So the bidding is going to be for $150,000 in increment, you know, going slowly. But I'm going to try to see what's the, you know, the highest it goes. So once you have set that, 
when you're actually bidding, you just do not want to overbid. It is very tempting. Hey, you know, it's only $5,000 more, $10,000 more, but it will cost you in the long run. You want to set your habits, right habits from day one. Hey, I have this budget. This is my target. I'm not going to overbid. Okay. We have seen that many times where you're just starting and then you eating up all your profits just by overbidding. Okay. And when you're doing this, you want to prepare your finances. Cash is acceptable, right? Accepted payment. So cash is just not hard cash, but cash in the bank, right? If the bank statement says $450,000, that's their cash, okay? In some cases, hard money loans and line of credits are acceptable. But this is a terrible, terrible idea if you ever going to flip a house and you get it through a hard money, uh, hard money loan because in mo unless you're really experienced you really know what you're doing hard money loans are okay but for a brand new uh investor hard money loans are not the way of doing it right you'll lose more money down the line right you'll need to provide proof of funds within 48 hours of winning the auction and you cannot say that, hey, I need to get a conventional loan on this because conventional financing cannot be used for to buy this property. Okay, you can't get your FHA loans, conventional, any of that stuff is not going to happen. Okay, so let's say you have been bidding and you actually won. If you won, now what? If you're the highest bidder at end of the auction, here are your post auction obligations, right? Number one is going to be your contract information. You will receive an email notification. You know, you're the highest bidder. You'll get your uh, purchase agreement, right? So obviously that contact information, you have to submit that form within one business days. Once you have provided that, they will, the bank will provide you with the purchase agreement, right? Once everything's verified, purchase agreement will be generated and you will need to sign it and return that document for the seller to review and sign, just like a normal contract. Proof of funds, you will have two days to provide that via email, and then your earnest deposit, right? Earnest deposit within two days. So normal things, everything is normal. You guys as realtors already know all of these process. The only thing is just the bidding part, right? And the bidding part, like we said before, you just want to get the hang of it, Create a free account for them, right? See which market that you want to be in. See which properties are coming on. So, and start bookmarking those pages. So let's say the auction is going to be for three or five days. Bookmark that page and see how did that auction end up, right? So you're not taking any action. You're just viewing it. Property was listed for 250. It went for 450. When did the auction start, you know, the bid started increasing? You can see all the details there, okay? Questions, guys. Questions on auction.com. No. You do not. No, that's the credit card for you to, uh, when you actually bid on it. And, yeah, for that. Even though no, no, there's no auction.com does not have any membership fees that I'm aware of, right? Yep. You're welcome. Yep. We're still going to talk about the form that you need to make sure that you guys get paid, but that'll be after we go in person auction. Any questions on auction.com or MLS that we've reviewed so far, guys, before we move on to in person auctions? Yeah, when they're verifying it, when you're creating the account, it will ask you, hey, verify your account, uh, you know, for, uh, upload uh, your driver license. doesn't have to be, uh, you don't want to provide your real estate license in that case. They're just asking for your photo ID. Uh, later on, uh, because you're going to be the buyer's agent, they will ask for your license number. All right. All right, guys. Next, let's talk about in-person auction. Just like how we talk about, you know, auctions online, auction.com in person are a little bit more exciting. They get, you know, the auction gets uh, done in like within five minutes. 
once it starts, when the bidding starts. So it's not, you know, you don't have to wait days for that. So how are you going to find these in-person auctions, right? We have our uh, team assistant here, Sukman. She's uh, uploading these property shark listing for you guys on WhatsApp on regular basis now. So, you know, I think uh, even this is uh, a screenshot is from that WhatsApp and this auction is actually going to happen on the 29th, right? So when you see uh, that PDF, just want to make sure that you guys know the concept of it. If you guys understand one of this, you guys can understand the whole PDF. It will give you the property address, which neighborhood it's in, it, uh, it's in. Your quick information for that property is one family. Sometimes it will have your lot size. Sometimes it might not. Because of this, you have this address. You can check on geodata and confirm those specs. Right? When is this auction happening? It's going to be August 29th. What time it is? 2.30. Where it is? It's going to be in Nassau County Supreme Court. Right. So these three things are the most important. You should know, you know, the date, time and location. Right. And to the right here where you see referee. Referee number uh, name here. That is the person that you need to make the earnest deposit check for. So let's say you want to put in a bid for uh, in person auction. And you're bidding, and let's say you know um, you bid it for four hundred thousand dollars. You have to give around ten percent earnest deposit on the same day, and they will the court will verify that beforehand too. Hey, you're about to bid. Do you either have cash or do you have a check, a uh, certified check made payable to Charles here? This name will be different from property to property. Okay. This is the person, this is the attorney that's handling this deal. So they're going to be, uh, you know, holding down to that check. Okay. So again, you have your address, you have your location, and then you have who, uh, you know, the referee is. Everything else, it's not as important as these things here. And on the bottom here, this is going to be your description, right? This is, these are the selling points that they have. So you want to read that off and you want to, say the very similar things to your client. Hey, this is a one family, you know, two stories, 2000 square feet built, eight bed, uh, uh, eight rooms, two bathrooms, you know, all these good stuff. So you have the information now, right? So you have that property information. Now what, right? The next step is that you want to take your client to this um, location. Say, hey, we're going to go to the auction. Are we going to actually bid there, right? You don't want to provide all these details uh, from Property Shark to them. You just want to tell them, right? Don't actually provide them with the PDF or anything like that. You want to, you know, hold on to that for yourself. You're simply telling them, come there. We have a property that's in Franklin Square. Hopefully, that property comes on the mark uh, at the auction. So you're going to take them there. How are you going to make sure that you are getting paid for this property, right? So you want to make sure that your buyer signs a non-agency buyer agreement, which is part uh, of the forms in your dot loop. If you select the template for buyers, one of the last forms is says non-agency buyer agreement. And this is an agreement that's legal binding, right? That's legally binding. And you want to have your buyer sign this. You can agree on a amount or percentage percentage tends to be better for auctions because you don't know what the price will be. So you can say, hey, I just want to get paid 2% of whatever, uh, you know, uh, the bidding, uh, you know, amount is. Whatever the contract price is going to be, we are going to, I'm going to get paid 2%. Okay. So you put 2% here and then you have them read rest of it. And then in here, where it says property, a type of property, you can say, hey, he's looking for a single family. It's an investor looking, you know, which location. Hey, he's in, looking in Nassau County. Uh, what's the price range, you know, between three hundred dollars to $500,000? And when does this agreement actually begins? And then you're going to have your buyer sign and you're going to have your agent sign. Once both of you guys sign, this agreement will make sure that you get paid on these auctions. Okay. Question, guys? Yes, sir.
Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. Okay. Really? You don't see? I mean, some properties don't have it, but, you know, let's going back to it. This is live. This is from a couple of last ones that I saw. But, you know, you should see a link like this as a HTTPS, right? And you just copy this whole thing. If you don't see it, if it says email uh, to the agent, then you just got to go through that route. But most of these, uh, you know, banks are providing this link. If you don't see it, you know, we can go over that uh, a little bit later. I just thought we have 10 minutes and I want to go over a couple of things, if that's okay. All right, sure, yeah. So if you don't see the link, guys, if it says just simply email, go that route, right? So we just mentioned that, you know, your client needs to bring in at least 10% cash or certified check payable to the referee's name, right? Again, same rules as we had on auction.com, same applies in in-person auction as well. You want to set your target. Hey, I want to, you know, don't go over uh, bidding for these uh, properties. And once you have that set, you just want to start bidding. And you will see the person who is doing the auction, they will tell you, hey, we're going to go in increments of $10,000, $15,000, $20,000. So it really depends on that too. Okay. So what happens in person, you won, right? Similar things. One, that they will ask for your photo ID. Second, they will ask for your 10% earnest deposit. And they will have you sign the buyer's agreement, right? Uh, your purchase agreement. And then you will have 30 days to close that. Okay? Very simple, straightforward. Once you have <clears throat> that, everything is signed, they'll give you copies of that, right? Even your copies of your earnest deposit. What is the next step? Next step is that you want to take <clears throat> those documents that you have. You want to take your investor and you want to go knock on that property. But you want to visit the property, you want to knock on that door for that property, and you want to speak to the previous owner and tell them, hey, you know, we are I'm pretty sure that you know the situation, that your property was on foreclosure, and we just won the bid, and we are the new owners. One, that they can simply shut the door on you, and you have to take legal action, or they might even listen to, you know, what you have to say and then you have to tell them hey tell me your situation how did you end up in this right did you have a hardship or whatnot right some of them will go on that level some of them will not but you're just trying to communicate and then you want to offer them hey you know i am the new owner i know you had a hardship that's why we went through this before now what can we offer you to move out you know is it the moving cost is it the first month of rent for the new place is it two months of rent is it like just flat out cash, $10,000? Whatever the process is, you want that as your level one, right? With that, it's like if they say yes to any of that, you're not just giving them the money. You're having an agreement with them. Hey, we will give you the money as soon as you give me the keys on that day. Let's say we set a 15 days or 30 day time frame. We will give you $10,000 for you to move out. But we need, you know, the whole property vacant. You're going to give me the keys and then we're going to give you their cash. The way you work something out on that note. If they say yes, that's your best option. If they say no, then you want to start your eviction process. Okay. Eviction process, we said it can take up to six months to a year, really depending on the location. And sometimes even I used to get excited uh, when going to uh, in-person auctions. A, you know, I see a list of 10 properties. Hey, we're going to see, you know, I saw a couple of them that was in uh, Elma, Valley Stream, Franklin Square, where I was really interested. And none of them came on the market, like none of them. And I was like, what the hell is going on? You know, and that happened a couple of weeks. So you will get cancellation. These uh, uh, auctions will get canceled on the last minute, right? 
not all scheduled auctions will be, you know, actually take place. If the current owner can delay it in any way or form, they will, right? Because they want to live there as long as possible. So they will try to delay it much as possible. All right, guys. So tell me, guys, was this helpful? You guys have any questions for auctions in person? Yes, sir. They will tell you. They will say, hey, the offset amount is $250,000, and we are going to go in increments of $20,000. So they will tell you, hey, those two things. So two fifty dollars is the starting point. And they'll say twenty thousand, so the next bidding will be two seventy, then two ninety, then three ten, three thirty, and it will go up like that. Yeah. No, ninety nine percent of the time is the lean amount. Sometimes is the lean amount plus other cost, other things that they want to add on to that. So they'll say, hey, you know, the lean amount on this is three fifty, but then they have you know a second lean or whatever the thing is. They will tell you exactly what that amount is. Yeah, and once you guys start going there, they you guys will see some properties that are, they start off at a million dollars and there might be only one person just bidding for that and just wins it on the first shot. And some of them are, you know, they're starting at $300,000 and then, you know, you will see other realtors and other investors take that up to like the close to market value and it makes no sense. So, you know, it couldn't go both ways. But the point here is that you guys get the hang of it, know what the process is and actually start making moves. You know, we are already providing you property shark details on a regular basis, right? Even if you guys can go there, you know, it's happening almost every day. You know, it's happening on um, uh, both in Nassau and Queens. So wherever you guys can make it, you know, just go there, even without bidding, without any uh, clients, just get the hang of it. Try to meet other people there, other realtors, and see how they're doing there. Build some connections, right? Auction.com, you have nothing to lose. Create a free account. Start paying attention to different areas uh, on auction.com. Yeah, Mickey, you want to say something? Correct. Yeah, squatting could be one of them. Yeah, but most of them will be homeowners, right? That was having some issues. But there are some investment properties too, where you know they was rented out, and the the tenant stopped making payments on those, and now is uh, you know is tenant occupied. What of the case is even if the owner was living there, now you're the new owner, right? Or your investor is a new owner, so that technically that person is a tenant now. So it's still the same process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. Yeah, we share that list. But as soon as when you even go to these auctions, they will have a similar list and they will cross out those couple of addresses. Hey, this one is not happening. This one is not happening. Um, you know, so again, we will give you a long list because that's what is showing up. Th those are scheduled. But like we said, you know, the, the owner will try to uh, delay it much as possible. The bank is never trying to delay it. Right. And you mentioned earlier when the offsets amount are really high, what the what the bank does is that they will wait a couple of different auctions. They will wait, let's say it's happening today and they did not get the offer that they like. And, you know, the next uh, week it happens the same thing. Then they'll start lowering their amount too, you know, but they won't do it from day one. All right, no problem. All right, guys. All right, guys. I hope this was helpful, guys. Uh, you know, we went through in details with these and just want to make sure that you guys are capable of handling, you know, if a client is asking for auction properties, 
uh, we should be part of that. We can legally make money on this. You know, we can help these guys out. Um, and these people have money in their bank and they don't know where to invest it. So we might think that, hey, you know, nobody wants to wait six months or a year. But if they can get a property now and, you know, they have money in the bank, they will invest. So let's not be judgmental like, hey, this is their money. They want to invest it. You as a realtor can just provide the details for the property and don't promise them that this property will come. Tell them, hey, there's a chance that this property will come on the market. Right. So it's scheduled, but it can get canceled. But you know the process of how to actually handle it and how to work with these clients. OK, guys. We will leave it at that, guys. It's 12 o'clock. We're short on time. Um, any last minute question? We'll wait another minute here. Yes. You mean this one here for, for you to get paid? This one? This is on dot loop through us on, on dot loop. Yes. You're welcome. All right, guys. Anything else before we get going? All right, guys. All right. We got to run now. So thank you so much for joining. Hopefully it was helpful. And I'll see you guys next week. All right. Take care. You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome. Take care, guys. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, guys. You too. Take care. Yep. You're welcome. You're welcome.